right. Good morning, everybody. How many of you have a desire to uh, sharpen your ability to hear the voice of God? There are so many times in, in my life, just especially just looking back on uh, my Christian journey, where I would, I would have just had this so deep desire to hear the voice of God. To know that it is actually Him speaking to me and not my own voice and not, not because I ate something weird the night before or whatever. But I want to know the real and genuine voice of God. And I believe that you do as well. And so that's why we're doing this series to help us to pay more attention and to really value and seek after hearing that genuine, that authentic voice of God. And so I'm glad that you're here today. We're going to talk uh, specifically about uh, how to hear God through desires today, as Pastor Rory mentioned. But last week, we kind of laid the foundation and we, and we um, just learned that God is a speaking God. That He is a very relational God. He desires relationships with His people. And we see Him speaking to us from the, from the very beginning to the very end. And we looked at those scriptures and we established the fact that every single child of God can hear the voice of God. It's not for the pastors only. It's not for the super spiritual. But every born again child of God can hear emphatically the voice of God. And so we, we talked last week about uh, the Bible. And I said last week, and this is so important, I can't understate uh, this, I can't overstate it, but it's the most consistent, the most reliable and healthy way to hear God's voice is by reading the Word. Yeah. By getting in the Bible, by studying and meditating and, and, and really memorizing the Word of God, engaging in the Word of God every single day, you will be able to better understand and hear the voice of God. Because when God speaks, he never speaks outside of alignment of his word. And so that's how you can tell oh, if this is real, is this is God's heart, if this is God's tone, if this is something that God will do, you will know that by the study of the word of God. Okay, so today we're going to talk about desires. One of the theme scriptures that the Lord um, has given us is, comes from John chapter 10, verses 3 and 5. If you have your sermon notes, just kind of follow along, take some notes with me. But uh, in case you don't have them, and in case you don't have your Bible, the, note, the sermon is always uh, uh, up on the screen behind me. So John 10, verses 3 through 5, is, uh, Jesus said this. The gatekeeper, who is Jesus himself, opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. Okay, so who's the shepherd here? It's Jesus, right? Jesus often used this metaphor of a shepherd and a sheep. That's what he's talking about here. We are the sheep, and the sheep listen to his voice, the shepherd. He goes on to say, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out his own he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because, why? They know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. And so our prayer during these, these next few weeks is this, that we will begin to grow even more strongly in our ability to hear God's voice and to distinguish His voice from any other competing voices, to distinguish His voice from our own voice and from the voice of the enemy who would try to deceive us. And so here's what we want to do together. It's, this is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. comes from the message paraphrase. We want to listen for God's voice in everything. We want to listen for God's voice in everything that we do. Everywhere that we go, He is the one who will keep us on track. His voice should be priority for our everyday lives. I mean, our everyday lives, like our parenting, our work life, um, our relationships, our, our marriages, our finances. Like, we should be listening to the voice of God 
in every single area of our life. His voice should be the most important thing. Jesus even emphatically stated this over and over in the New Testament when he said uh, sentences like this. Look at Luke chapter 8, verse 8. He who has ears to hear, let him do what? Let him hear. Does anybody have ears in here? All right. Uh, somebody once told me, Brian, you, God gave you two ears and one mouth. That means you should listen twice as much as you talk. <clears throat> but it's also important in our spiritual lives to pay attention to our listening. Pay attention to our listening, even in our prayer life. Think about this. What if your prayer life was more cons- consisted twice as much of listening than you speaking? Now think about that. But Jesus said, uh, he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. So today I want to talk about another way that God speaks to his people, and that is through our desires. Everybody say desires. desires. <clears throat> Psalm 37, verse 4. This is the scripture I really want us to think about deeply today. It says this, delight yourself in the Lord. Underline that word delight. And he will give you the desires, underline that word desires, of your heart. I want you to think about that this morning. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I absolutely love this verse, and it was, one of my, it was one of my favorite verses, one of the first ones I really ever memorized, because it paints such an amazing picture of God. In fact, when I think about this verse, when I meditate on it, it's like it causes me to sigh really deep, and to be like, Whew. okay, God's plan for me is good. His love for me never ends. And he wants me to delight myself in him. And as I delight myself in in my relationship with him, he will give me the desires of my heart. Now think about that because it takes the pressure off of you. It takes the pressure off of you. And what is your role in all of this? Your role is to delight yourself in your relationship with God. So I want us to think about this because we have to be careful not to misunderstand what this verse is talking to us about. Because here's here's what I know about me. Here's what I know about all of us here. All of our desires are not good ones. Okay, can we just go ahead and own up to that and go ahead and admit that even in church? Okay, all of our desires are not necessarily good. Good ones. Let's just be real about it. Uh, so I, I think it's important to think about what this verse is actually saying to us. And this whole de- concept of desire really means and how God speaks to that. So let's talk about specifically two uh, key words in this verse. Okay, Delight and desire. I want you guys to think about those words with me. Delight. The scripture says delight yourself In the Lord. Okay? What does it mean to delight? It means to be greatly pleased with. To be greatly pleased in. It also means words like enchanted. To be captivated by. To be entranced with. To be thrilled with. To have joy and gladness concerning something. And we have to ask ourselves, is that the way that we feel about our relationship with God? Are we thrilled with our relationship with God? Are we so excited and just encaptured, enraptured with uh, our relationship with God? Or are we a little bit lukewarm with our relationship with Him? One foot in, one foot out, not 100% sure about God. But the truth is we can't ignore the first part of this verse. Where it says, delight yourself in the Lord. We have to be honest and we have to ask ourselves, where does our joy come from? Where does our joy come from? What, are, what makes us most excited? Where is our delight, really? 
And if it's in the Lord, the promise of this verse is that he will give you the desires of your heart. So the rest of the verse says he will give you those desires. But what does that word desires mean? Jot this down if you're taking notes with me. Desires is a strong feeling of wanting something or wishing something to happen. It could be what you wish for, what you strongly want, what you crave, what you aspire to. Desire is not necessarily a thing, but it's, it's the feeling, the craving to, to have that thing. For, for example, I think, about, I think about what people have said to me from time to time as a pastor, as I'm counseling with people. This, this verse is not necessarily saying that God's going to give you everything you want. Right? That God is he's not this um, uh, cosmic Santa Claus who just because you want something, he's just going to give it to you. And that's not what this verse is saying. We don't need to misunderstand that. For example, someone might say, God, I was unfaithful to my spouse and it would ruin my marriage if they found out. Please don't let them find out. Right? <clears throat> You could say, God, I was busted for drugs again, and I'm in jail, and if you'll get me out of here, boy, I'll follow you, and I will delight myself in you for the rest of my life. Or somebody might say, God, I'm in so much debt. Will you provide a miracle and let me hit the jackpot at the casino, as Rory was talking about, with the nickel machines? And I'm going to do this, and I'm going to see what happens, because, God, I'm counting on you to just bail me out. Or, God, it may be for a new house or a new car or a new job. And, and listen, these things are not necessarily bad desires. And yes, God does want to help us in our, time, in our times of need. But sometimes what we think we need is not what we really need. Amen. That's exactly <clears throat> So when we, when we read that God is going to give us the desires of our hearts, it carries with us this powerful thought. Jot this down if you're taking notes with me. As you find, as you find your delight in the Lord, He is going to upload desires, cravings, things you want, things you're passionate about into your heart. In order to move you and to use you for his purposes. In other words, as we are enjoying a deepening, life-giving relationship with our God, he will upload his desires into your heart. Now think about this. He, so that your desires for your life begin to match up with his desires for your life. So that your desires begin to actually align with what he desires. Have you ever heard somebody just in conversation with them say, the Lord's really working on my heart on this. The Lord's really changing my heart on this. Have you ever said that? Have you ever heard anybody say that? When, when you hear that, you can be assured that God is speaking to that person through a God-given Desire. So let's break this down a little bit further and just talk about three different kinds of desires that are found in the scriptures. Okay? You guys still with me? Okay. This is kind of a different message today. I'm really taking time to just walk through and teach uh, what, how God speaks through desire. So let's look at the first kind of desire that we see in the scripture, and it's this, the bad desires. Bad desires. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Galatia, Galatia and said this. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify what the desires of the flesh. What are the desires of the flesh? It's, it's sin, it's selfishness, it's rebellion, it's lying, it's, it's all of those kinds of things. The desires of the flesh. For Look at what he said. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with one another, so that you are not, so that you are not to do whatever 
you want. Now, I just I cannot preach this with integrity without just saying, Hi, my name is Brian and I have bad desires. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and admit that and get that out of the way. But we have to level up and just be real about it. We have to realize that no matter where we are on our journey with God, no matter who you are, this battle, this inner battle that the Apostle Paul is talking about still exists in each one of our lives. And so as we're talking about bad desires, what we're not doing is pointing fingers at you and saying you're a bad person. That's not what we're doing. What we're saying is that we all have areas of our lives, desires in our hearts that we know down deep are not from God and they're not what God would have for us. Not because God wants to keep us from experiencing something good, but because God wants us to experience something even better. And those things that are even better is his freedom and his grace and his love and his joy and his peace that are all found in a relationship with Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. God's not trying to keep us from good things. No, he's trying to give us things that are even better. So I came across this quote from C.S. Lewis. And it really spoke to me, and it said this, We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Think about that for a minute. Because sometimes I think we think that God is intimidated by our desires. To the point where we get embarrassed to talk about them in church or with our church friends. But in reality, God looks at us and our desires like I look at my kids and their desires. I think about my own kids. I think about my youngest kid. He's six years old. His name is Warner. And some of you may have noticed he has a very unhealthy desire for candy. I mean, everything that has sugar in it, he wants it, and he wants it now, and he wants a lot of it. I'm not even kidding. Like, even on Sundays when he wakes up, he immediately starts thinking about how he can get some candy this day. You know that uh, candy bowl out in the the lobby? Like, that is his bowl. He loves candy. We hear it in the car. We hear it as he walks to the building. He is all about this candy. And I'm thinking to myself, really? Come on, kid. Candy? That's what you want out of, out of everything that's available to you in this world. Out of all the goodness and even all the wonderful foods that are out there that are good for you, that are just nutritious for you, all of these things. I mean, there is a big buffet of wonderful things that you could choose from in this world. And Warner, you want junk food. <clears throat> I believe this is how God views the desires of our hearts. He's like, really? That is what you want? When you could have all this, when you could have the riches that are in Christ Jesus, when you could have the mind of Christ, when you could have all the blessings of God in your life, this is what you want? You want food, sex, ambition? What about the treasures of the kingdom? And we choose to settle for less than what God has for us. So God convicts us of these bad desires, right? And he helps us to realize that what he has to offer is so much better. He doesn't convict us to make us feel condemned, to point that finger at us, but to sanctify us and to redeem those desires for his purposes. So what does that mean? It means that God wants us to be free 
from those bad desires. He wants us to know that he is the one who can set us free. He can, get, he can change our desires. These things that we want aren't life-giving. These things that we're addicted to are not good for us. They drain us. They sap us. They burn us out. And we know that they are not right, but we do them anyway. It's the desires of our flesh. And friends, I just got to tell you the good news this morning is that the, there is power in the gospel of Jesus Christ to transform lives. There is power in the cleansing blood of Jesus. There is power in the finished work of of the cross. There is forgiveness of sins. There is full restoration and redemption that is offered in Christ. There is power in his name. There's power in the name of Jesus to absolutely transform our lives and to redeem those bad desires. And when God can use, and, and then, listen, God, after God redeems those bad desires, he wants to use your life to make a difference in the life of somebody else who may be going through the same thing. So God can speak to us in, in a graciously convicting voice in our bad desires. He can free us from them and he can use us in spite of them. Some of the most powerful testimonies that I know are from people who have been in some dark places in life and they were transformed by God and now they are speaking life back into those dark places. <clears throat> Bad desires. Number two is this good desires. <clears throat> so we also have good desires. I think about, I, I love to be out in nature. I love to explore the outdoors, to visit national parks. And we were at Red Rock Canyon yesterday. I just had the time of my life enjoying God's creation. I mean, think about it. God has created us to enjoy life, to explore, to create, to eat good food, to enjoy our spouses in the bedroom. Hello. And, to, and, and God, created, God created taste buds. Like he wants us to, God created, okay, I'm going to say this in church, please forgive me. God created sexual organs. He loves to have us have pleasure in life. He loves it. It's okay to talk to you like that in church? Okay. He wants us to enjoy life, to experience the good things of life, the pleasurable things, the wonderful things. It says in Psalms 31, Verse 19, how abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all on, on, in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. God it blesses us with good things, good desires. They're wonderful. But here's where it gets a little bit tricky for us when we th start thinking about these good desires. And they, they can quickly, if we're not careful, become our gods. They're great gifts from God. But they're horrible gods. Does that make sense? Okay. So comfort, money, sex, career, friendship, talent, traveling... The perfect house, the right church, the perfect spouse. These things are great and they are wonderful gifts from God, but they make a horrible God. <clears throat> and we can't put our hope in these things because why? They will let us down every single time. They're always going, we're always going to want more and we're always going to feel like something is missing in our lives. And my friends, i got to tell you, it's only in Christ that we can find our true sense of security. It's only in Christ that we find out who we really are, our true identity, and our sense of significance and purpose. It's only in Christ. It's only in relationship with Him that we find out what life is really, really all about. So good desires. They're great but they make horrible gods. Be careful for that. And then there's this third kind of desires, and this is what we all want. They're, these are God desires. These are God-given desires. I want to show it to you in Scripture. 
In Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, look at this. And the Spirit gives us desires. The Holy Spirit of God places and deposits desires in each one of us. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, for God is working in you. Guys, did you know that God is working in you? Even when you cannot see it, even when you can't feel it, even when you can't see what he's doing or understand anything that he's doing, the Bible says you can be assured that God is working in you. He's working in you. What's he doing? He's giving you the desire. Everybody say desire. Desire. And the power to do what pleases him. So not only does God give us his desires for our lives, but he also gives us the power of the Holy Spirit to bring those desires into into fruition. Right? He gives us desires and then he accompanies that desire with power to bring it about. To manifest it. In Psalm 20. Verse 4, the psalmist prayed. He said, may he, God, give you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. In other words, there are God-given desires that he puts in each one of our hearts. And it's his prayer that those desires will come to pass. Why? Because those desires are connected to your God-given purpose. It's connected to what God has designed you and wired you to do. Those desires are not by accident. Those desires are intentional desires given by the Holy Spirit of God and empowered by His Holy Spirit power. Because why? Because God has a purpose for you. He has a unique design for you. He has something that He wants you to do. In this life. And he gives that to each one of us. May he grant you. This is the prayer I've been praying for for you. This week. May he grant you according to your heart's desire. And fulfill all of his purpose. That he has for you. So the Holy Spirit. Jot this down if you're taking notes with me. The Holy Spirit deposits. Desires in our hearts. In order to steer us. Where he wants to take us. This is how God leads us. This is one way that he speaks to us, right? This is one way. Remember, delight yourself in the Lord. Find your delight in your relationship with him. And he will give you the desires of your heart. And how many of you know it's those desires that help to steer us? That helped us to make the right decisions based upon what we feel that God is calling us To do. These are God given desires. Have you ever felt like God was depositing a desire in your heart to do something, to be something, to make a difference in some way, to talk to somebody or to forgive somebody? Maybe God has given you a desire to for music, for worship, for singing. There's a reason for that. There's a purpose for that because God wants to use that desire to steer you in the direction that he wants to take you. So your God-given desires are very, very important. And God's voice, we hear his voice clearly through those God-given desires. Let me give you three simple statements that have helped me in the past to think a little bit more deeply about God-given desires. Number one is this, what you love is a clue to the gifts, the skills, the wisdom that you may possess. Think about this, what you love, the things that God has given you, the passion in your heart, the things that you just absolutely, that fill up your heart with love is a clue. Are you thinking about what your purpose is? Are you thinking about what God may be calling you to do through your desires? Well, think about what you love. Think about that desire that God may have put there about something that excites you, something that you're passionate about. 
What is it that you love? Because it may be that it's a clue to the gifts that you already have, to the gifts that God wants to give you, to the, to the skills, to the wisdom that you may already possess. Or he may be leading you. You may be young in all this, and he may be leading you step by step further into your purpose, and you need to pay attention to those desires. What is it that you love that is from God? Number two is this. What grieves you? is a clue to something you may be assigned to heal. What is it that absolutely breaks your heart? <clears throat> For me, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's seeing people that have no relationship with God. It's seeing people that do not understand that they have a purpose from him. They don't understand that there is identity for him. They have no church community to be a part of. And that desire that grieves me steers me. Do you see that? God uses that desire, that burden, that thing that breaks your heart to actually steer you in the way that you should go. You guys still following with me? Okay, so, and the third one is this, what you hate is a clue to something that you may be assigned to correct. <clears throat> what you hate, what infuriates you, and remember, these are God-given. These are based upon the scripture. These are based upon when you delight yourself in the Lord, he gives you these things that you love. He gives you these things that grieve you. He gives you these things that, that infuriate you as you delight yourself in him. So those things that you hate may be really a, a, an important clue for you to understand that you actually may be assigned to help correct whatever that issue is. And it's that desire that God is speaking through in order to steer you where he wants you to go. Is this making any kind of sense? Okay. So God designed you and me. He destined us to be someone special and absolutely unique. And let me ask you a question. Could it be that you haven't stayed still long enough? That you haven't quieted down long enough and you haven't opened up your heart long enough to hear God speaking through those desires. Here's what I want to ask you to do now. And to be intentional about it in the next few weeks coming up. I want you to find a quiet spot. And I want you to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And trust me, I, I know that doing that goes against our culture. Right? Our culture says, you better be busy. You better be productive or you're not good for anything. But listen to me. There is value in slowing down, getting quiet before the Lord and saying, Lord, would you help me to really grasp the God-given desires that you have put inside of me? Because listen to me. God births. God births and cultivates Desires when we're still enough to listen. We listen and we tap into those desires that God has put in our heart. And then your next step after that is to, once you really understand those God given desires in your heart, you better find an accountability partner. You better tell them about it and ask them to walk with you in those things. And then you need to take some action. When God gives us those desires, they're not just to be ignored or stuffed down. They are in order for us to take some action steps. To be obedient to what God has called us to do. Amen? And it's much, much more uh, wise, if you want to walk this out, is to have other people locking arms with you and saying, I'm going to do this with you. I'm going to have an accountability partner, and I want you to help me. 
I want you to hold me accountable for what I feel like God is saying to me. Because I don't want to be disobedient and I don't want to be slacking. And I don't want to be um, doing things that are not a part of my purpose. I need some accountability. So take action. After you find some quiet time to think about those desires, get an accountability partner and begin to take some action. So wherever you find yourself today, let me go ahead and invite the worship team up. I just want you to think about this today. Wherever you find yourself today, maybe you've come in to this place and you have some bad desires that have just come to mind this morning, some things that you just can't seem to get rid of, and they've been hanging around long enough, and you need to leave them behind. You need to leave them at the foot of the cross of Jesus. And there needs to come a point in your life where you draw the line in the sand and you say, enough is enough. No more. I'm taking these things and I'm giving them to my Lord and Savior. The Bible says, cast all your anxieties, all your cares to him. Why? Because he cares for you. I want you to know that this morning. I don't want you to feel condemned if you're in that place where all you have is bad desires because God's not condemning you. He may be convicting you to bring you out of it because he wants greater freedom and peace and joy in your life. And we need to take that to the Lord and take it to the cross and give it to him. And maybe... You're here today and, and you're just, you have those good desires in your life and you're just taking them for granted. <laughs> How many of us take those good things for granted? And there are times where we just need to ask God to open our eyes to the blessings and to the beauty that's all around us and that those gifts would not lose their ability to bring us pleasure, to excite us. Because, listen, God wants us to enjoy our lives. <clears throat> Make the way that you live here on this earth an act of worship. Remember, those good things are great gifts from God, but they make terrible gods. And maybe, maybe for you, you've, you've had these desires in your heart that have never left you, and you know they've been given to you by God. Or maybe it's a recent desire that God has been birthing and cultivating in you. It could be a place. It could be a person. It could be a calling. It could be a hobby. It could be a responsibility. It could be a career. It could be a passion. Whatever it is that God has been birthing in you, sit with God about it. Dream with God about it. Explore with the Lord. What do you want to do with this in my life? Because you may be shocked at how God uses that desire to steer you, to move you according to his plans and purposes for you that are always good. Amen? Okay. Would you stand with me, please? Whatever situation that you find yourself in, I believe God's speaking to us. God's speaking to us through our desires, the desires of our heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, right? Say it with me. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. All right, one more time like you mean it. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Let's, let's pray today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of your scriptures. We thank you for the moving of your Holy Spirit even now. And as we enter into this time of prayer, Lord, I pray, Father, that our hearts would be still enough And open enough to hear your voice speaking through our desires. I pray, Father, for my brothers and sisters to grow deeper in their delight in you. 
strengthen my brothers and sisters today to find their greatest joy in their relationship with you. To find their greatest pleasure by spending time with you. And Father, I know that as we do that together, as a community of believers, that you're going to lead us and you're going to deposit your desires into our hearts. Enable us, Lord, to hear your voice in this moment, in this week, in all the days of our lives, God. My friends, you, you may be here today and you, be, you may be like, I don't have a relationship with God. How in the world can I hear the voice of God if I don't know him? The first thing to do is what a pastor did for me many years ago. He led me in a simple prayer. And it started this relationship. It opened the door to this relationship with God. And I just want to ask you, are you here today and you need a relationship with God? You need to experience salvation. You need to know that your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life and that when this earthly life is over, you will enter into heaven. You will spend eternity with your Lord and with your Savior. If that's you today, I want to invite you to pray this prayer after me. It's really simple. I want to ask everybody just to repeat it after me. Heavenly Father, I repent for being master of my own life and living separate from you. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. I welcome you, Holy Spirit, into my life to rescue and empower me and to restore me to intimacy with my heavenly father in Jesus name I pray amen